This is uh, a case in which the, the public procurement of works was held in a municipality in, in Provence, in France. Uh, and as said, there were about uh, 26 companies operating there. Um, so the tool helps loading their characteristics. And thanks to this visual interface, we can already see that there are 26 companies participating to this procurement from France, so one country. But then there are also 21 beneficial owners, so individuals controlling these companies and other shareholders and directors. We can also see from this uh, section that there are already, the, the tool identifies some common beneficial owners, some common shareholders and directors. So some of these companies are actually connected. So they have uh, some individuals or entities uh, in common. Also, this uh, shows in a glance uh, what are the risk factors identified uh, for this set of companies. As you can see, there are territorial risks. So some of these companies are exposed to risky areas. Uh, some of them are active in, in risky sectors. Some of them also show features of ownership structure risk, and we will see them later, and also other, uh, other risk factors. Three companies also have features of political exposure, so uh, they are connected to individuals uh, potentially having a significant political role, uh, which is, of course, a potential risk factor for a conflict of interest or, or corruption in a public procurement. So the tool automatically also shows uh, uh, these orange boxes that are the companies that we are having analyzed and uh, it automatically also traces uh, who controls this company. So uh, the beneficial owners and the shareholders, as we can see already, some of these boxes are connected. So there are some companies that show uh, potential common owners or directors, but we can use a specific section of the tool to identify groups of connected companies. So potentially having, uh, showing some collusion or coordinated uh, behaviors. So the tool, basically now we are identifying automatically uh, groups of companies that show common beneficial owners or common addresses. Uh, so they are basically located at the same premises. As we can see, these two companies have the same address and they're also controlled by the same individual. This other group, uh, of these two uh, companies in blue are also uh, located at the same premises and they are controlled by the same individuals. You can see another uh, group of companies that is controlled by the same shareholding structure, uh, which is also quite complex as we see a long uh, uh, chain of owners uh, going through France and then ending up in a trust in the Cayman Island. Uh, and again, these other group of companies are located at the same premises, which is uh, another risk factor of potential coordinated behavior. So having uh, companies potentially uh, registered or concentrated on the territory. The maps, also oh, we can use the graph also to, uh, to see where some of the risk factors are identified. So for instance, we saw at the beginning that some of these companies were uh, being connected with the, with the politically exposed persons or local administrators. And the graph in a visual way allows to concentrate our effort also in the structure. So we see colored in red, these three companies that are linked to uh, an individual which uh, is a politically exposed person or a local administrator, and we can investigate this further in another section. Uh, the map, as said, uh, allows to see if there are geographic concentration of companies in the territory, which in the case of public procurement is a risk factor of uh, potential collusion. Uh, as we can see, companies are distributed across uh, the whole of France, but if we use the specific function of the tool, we can see which are the municipalities or the areas where there is the highest concentration of companies. And we see that this municipality in, in uh, Côte d'Azur actually shows uh, a high number of company registered and some of them also share the same address, uh, potentially indicating some, some risk factors of, of collusion. Uh, the tool can also be used to trace the geographic exposition of these companies. So we see that some of them, as we have seen before, uh, actually are exposed to, to the Cayman Island and some of them to uh, some Middle Eastern uh, region, which can also be a factor of interest in other types of financial investigations. Um, the tool then allows to calculate in real time the risk indicators, which is one of the main 
feature of this of, of this platform uh, and as Michele exposed they are a result of uh, of a few years of research testing and validation both empirically and also uh, somehow institutionally so gathering the inputs from the end user we can see that this company is uh, linked to a local administrator so an individual uh, that is reported from official French open data as being the municipality councillor in the municipality where the procurement was held so something to be further investigated by by an authority as a potential conflict of interest or or corruption pattern uh, but we also see that there are some territorial risks uh, as uh, as as seen before some of these companies are related to entities in the Cayman Islands, which are included, included in official gray list from the FATF and the European Union. But also we see that some of these companies have some risk factors in terms of their ownership complexity. Uh, so this company, for instance, shows an anomalous complexity in terms uh, of the number of shareholders that separate the company from its beneficial owner, which is uh, unjustified or somehow anomalous with respect to similar companies active in the same in the same sector and having the same dimension. The tool allows also to to see the geolocation of the two of the companies, um, and we can we can suddenly see that some of these companies are actually located at the same pre uh, premises. Uh, while, of course, they are supposed to, to compete with each other. So this is, uh, of course, a strong risk factor of uh, potential coordinated behavior. Um, so all this information can, uh, can be used uh, as intelligence by, by the, end, uh, the end user. And for instance, we can see also that there is another company showing uh, uh, risk factors of opacity as it is controlled uh, by a trust, a fiduciary, or a fund that does not uh, allow identify the beneficial owner in this case it is an entity registered in Luxembourg for which it is not possible uh, to somehow uh, reconstruct the full ownership and reach a beneficial owner so all this information as said can be uh, downloaded and, uh, and somehow used uh, by the authority to, to build the case and, and, and progress in the, in, the, uh, in the investigation patterns The main uh, area where we are active uh, are the early stages of the criminal investigations, and this is where data cross is extremely useful. We have, of course, li like it happens in many other jurisdictions, uh, frequent cases of CO fraud, and in these cases, it's important to, to have quick access to, to data related to uh, the companies and uh, members of, of uh, administration and so forth. It was a case like the one that we are talking about where this information was needed quite fast by the investigator. We used data crows and then based on the link that uh, we were offered, we contacted our uh, counterparts. As you have seen also in Antonio's presentation, there are additional functions that the system is uh, providing us with, including geolocation. And this was again very important because we were able to trace also uh, patrimony of, of the companies. A third case, and again, all these are mainly ongoing investigations, are related to uh, creation of an organized crime group, embezzlement and money laundering, where again, it was important to, found, to find links with foreign jurisdiction, jurisdictions, and this is what uh, Data Cross helped us to obtain. In this specific case, we were able to trace back uh, companies, managers, directors, data related to identification of those persons and also data related to, to, to uh, shares and actives that they have in Great Britain, Moldova, Monaco, USA, Cyprus and Spain. So uh, I'm going to talk a few minutes on uh, the use case that we had that we used um, data calls for. It concerned a Belgium national is a gold trader. It was a complex and international case. Uh, we had a lot of companies in Belgium uh, in uh, the European Union and also uh, worldwide. And this is the first uh, sc uh, screen of data cross two with a relevant selection of all these companies. We, we uh, distilled 11 companies. And uh, for me, a very interesting thing was the uh, adverse events. They were now a uh, uh, low risk. 
But as you move on in the case file, uh, you, you're able to uh, enrich the data with your own findings, and uh, you can enrich uh, the data that is already available in data cross. So uh, at the beginning, the, the adverse events, the enforcement, the sanction list, and the offshore leaks are all green. But as the case file evolves, you will see that these um, indicators uh, become uh, red. Another very interesting uh, uh, feature in the data cross in the data cross two, uh, tool is this network analysis that uh, also Antonio uh, showed you. And um, this overview is very uh, useful because it gives you a general overview on the company and also on the persons related to the company and, uh, and, and their relation to the company or their director. Is it current director, former director, is, or the shareholders and for how many percentage do they hold uh, the shares and which companies are connected to which persons. So this kind of overview is a very important feature and a very important tool that we use very often in our day-to-day -day, uh, investigations. Uh, another very important uh, uh, feature that I learned to work with is the connection to the other da uh, data sources. So this is an example of the adverse media events uh, on a money laundering um, media indication of our target that was uh, mentioned in the media for uh, money laundering. Um, this is a proposed um, media article. You, If you deem it uh, interesting to the case file and it's related to the target, you can uh, confirm this link and then it will show up in the uh, updated uh, uh, indicators. Another thing in our use case uh, that we found was that our target was mentioned in the sanction list. And it is also a very important uh, uh, thing to know and a very important feature to add to the case file. Uh, and then you see that this update risk indicator show that yeah, there is an adverse media event and the target is mentioned in the sanction list. And you have uh, a very uh, good overview of the details of these, uh, of these events. So the, the results uh, relating to the case file using uh, data course two is that we saw that uh, the children of the target uh, are moving into key positions in the structure. And we saw that by, by using analyzing uh, the, the data that we saw in this uh, overview, uh, this network overview in the data course two tool. Uh, we also uh, learned that the wife of the target is a political exposed person. Uh, and uh, some articles showed that the target is uh, starting up new uh, gold trade activities in, uh, in, in South America. So uh, to conclude, uh, what we find very interesting in the data cross two tool is that the, the en uh, enriching of the data uh, on adverse events and other uh, items is, a, is uh, an added value to a day-to-day -day work in uh, uh, analyzing data. Uh, the time saved uh, is, is enormous uh, using uh, data cross two. We save an enormous uh, amount of time. Uh, and my last remark would be that we we need uh, a structural access to these kind of data databases and these kinds of platforms uh, to to facilitate our day to day work in uh, in financial uh, investigations. The the first, uh, uh, the first case regards the, the Mafia dei Pascoli, uh, which is um, uh, a criminal organization uh, based in, uh, in Abruzzo in southern Italy. Uh, we, started from, uh, uh, we started this investigation uh, from some court records and uh, uh, with uh, four interdictive anti-mafia. The interdictive is basically um, um, uh, um, a declaration by uh, the uh, authorities that uh, uh, signal a specific entity because of the uh, of the likely uh, mafia connection. Uh, starting from these uh, interdictive, we basically uh, uh, expand the network of the people uh, uh, mentioned in these interdictive. Uh, trying to find other companies uh, in in the agricultural uh, sector, which was the the, the main uh, uh, focus of the investigation, and we filter them with another uh, uh, platform that is made by uh, other journalists that is called farmsubsidy.org. It is it basically allows to understand how much money each uh, uh, agricultural company uh, received uh, have received in the past uh, 
uh, by uh, the, by the European uh, um, from the European uh, entities. Uh, we combine this information through local sources and some studies already that were uh, aimed to um, to uh, explain how uh, basically the agricultural fraud, funds fraud uh, are uh, conducted in Italy, uh, and the result uh, was uh, uh, were pretty interesting because we were able to. Uh, basically to uh, understand three different mechanisms in order to uh, uh, to hijack these uh, these uh, uh, European funds basically to the same beneficial uh, beneficial uh, in which are not based in the country in the region where these funds are aimed to be sent so we found the three different groups uh, of owners, one based in northern regions, uh, uh, the other in southern region, and in the in the middle there were also shareholders who are basically infiltrating some local companies in order to receive the funds, uh, the European funds for agriculture. Uh, when we filtered the uh, results uh, with uh, uh, especially territorial risk, uh, we were able also to understand that uh, within the southern uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the shareholders from uh, southern Italian region, there were also people mentioned in uh, and involved in mafia investigation in the past. 